Hello. In this topic, we are going to see how to set up connection between the source system and target system using an SLT and what are the various options we have. Let's first take a look at the SAP HANA Studio and where you will actually go to find out about SLT. So SLT can be operated from this particular functionality called data provisioning. So if you click on data provisioning and then if you select on your system, it will currently show what is happening with SLT. So just to give you a quick brief, we have the source system, which is the EH7 system, which is an SAP ERP system. And in the target schemas, we have a couple of connections. We have ECC SLT and then SLT HANA application. So these are two connections which are talking to the source system and target system. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a new one and you will see how to do all the steps. And then we'll come back and in the next topic, we'll do some application. All right, let's go ahead and do it. First, you need to know a couple of things. So to start with, the connection properties are here. So if you see down here, this host name is syshdb9 and instance number is 00. So you need to keep those two things in mind if you want to connect to the target system. In the source system, we are going to talk to the SAP ECC system. So we'll go to the SAP logon. We will be connecting to this system. So let's go and take a look at the properties. So this is the application server we'll be connecting to. Now the first thing is to be able to create a connection in the SLT server, you need to have a pre-built connection to the ERP system. So to do that, we have a transaction called SM. 59 so this is the SAP logon you guys know how to log how to come here so let's go ahead to SM 59 this is these are all the connections which are available here so I we are looking at an ABAP connection so you open it and there's already a connection made for us with the name ECC underscore SLT underscore HANA so if you double click on it you will get to know what are the details Firstly, you want to know the name and then finally, you want to know where it is going to connect. So it's connecting to our target host, which is our ERP system. This is the application server. Okay, so what we're going to do now, now we're going to log into the SLT server itself. To do that, the transaction is LTR and you can hit enter. Now it's going to open a Webdyne Pro application, which is hosted on your browser is asking for an authentication. I have already provided the details so we can log in. Now you see that we already have one connection running SLT underscore HANA underscore replication. So this is how you can check the status of your different connections in the SAP SLT server. Now we're going to create a new connection. So let's go and say new. And here you need to give the different names. So let's say SLT underscore and when you come down here, you need to identify with the, whether this is an SAP system or a non-SAP system. So we want to connect to an SAP system and therefore you need to pick up an RFC connection. So you just click on it and it will show you all the options available. Right, there it is. So I'm going to say ECC underscore SLT underscore HANA. I'm going to say allow multiple usage because by doing that, it will allow this connection to be reused multiple times. Now we want to be able to connect to the HANA system. So you need to give the username, username and system. Password is okay. And then you need to give the host name. So the host name is sys hdb9. And instance number is 00. zero. The number of transfer jobs, you can say, I can say maybe three. And this, this number of transfer jobs actually decides the amount of parallel processes which will be created while creating the data provisioning. So the more number of jobs, the better the performance. Then if you come down here to the real time 
sorry to the replication options you have three options one is the real time which we are going to go with as we discussed before you can also create it for a scheduled interval and you can also create it on a specific time that's about it let's go and say okay it's creating the connection now and if you see here the connection has been created for us with the mass transfer id 060 okay let's click on it and see exactly what is happening now this is the more details page of the connection and there are a couple of tabs here first is the jobs and connections let's go and understand what's happening in the jobs and connections so the current status is released it's, it's taking some time to create the connection okay i i had to stop this server this particular connection sorry because it was overloaded it's just working fine now so if you come to the details page if you go to the jobs and connections the server is running and everything is fine the triggers are being created so this is it takes some time to create the triggers and uh, we leave it as it is for some time now let's go and take a look at what has happened on the hana perspective and how things look there now if you come back here and i have not done anything if you see automatically another option comes up <clears throat> excuse me called as slt underscore hana and if you click on that it says that these three tables are in replication so this is the default behavior of slt because these tables carry the dictionary of all the tables in the source system which is the same behavior for sap and non sap source and through this we are able to request what kind of tables you want to replicate and load and what else does it do so it does a couple of other things first of all it creates a schema with the same name slt underscore hana so if you come down here you will have a schema called slt underscore hana okay we don't see that schema if you see here in this area we don't see that schema called srt underscore hana that's because we have not refreshed the system so let's go ahead and do that and now we will be able to see that schema called slt underscore hana so th there it is and if you open it and if you go to the tables you will see these three tables obviously and also along with those tables you will see some rs tables now rs tables are called the control tables and these tables are used to control the slt so for example if you were to place an order or in the sense if you were to request um, a replication or a loading of a specific table then that order will be actually placed in this rs order table and the slt schema will reads into this order table every five seconds so that's how SLT knows that you have ordered a specific table to be replicated or loaded. So these tables are very important. Along with it, it creates a couple of uh, other artifacts, like it creates some procedures to grant and revoke, ac revoke access, excuse me. And it also creates some users in the users tab. If you if we'll, real, we'll go real quick and take a look at the users. So if you come down here, we will see that there's a user called SLT HANA. There are also a couple of roles created. You can take a look at that as an exercise. In the next topic, we will see how to use SLT to load and replicate data in the different operations involved.